Um, hello, my name is Anthony Delgado, uh, and I'm here with Miss um, uh, Maura Daquila uh, on November 11th, 2020. Uh, this interview is part of the Catholic Institutions of North Central Florida project um, with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. Uh, thank you very much for um, talk, taking the time to talk with me today. Um, and I'll get started by asking you, uh, where were you born? I was born in Staten Island, New York. Okay. And um, how would you describe your childhood? My childhood was uh, probably a pretty normal childhood coming from an Irish-Italian background. Um, uh, you know, I mean, it, it involved growing up with my parents were both very instrumental in making sure that I, I got the morals and the faith that I needed to wind up being able to live a good life. Um, so you would say that um, your faith has always been like a, an important part of your, like always. an important part of your upbringing? Yep. Always. Oh. Um, and then uh, how, would, how did you come to, to Gainesville? Well, my father was stationed at Camp Landing during World War II. He did his basic training there. And every Saturday they'd come in to Gainesville or every time they had, you know, the time off, they'd come into Gainesville to the Thomas Center. Uh, at that point, it was a hotel, and uh, he actually loved Gainesville. Um, when he and my mother married, um, he promised her he would not move her from New York until after her parents were deceased. Um, and so after they died, he loved Gainesville, so he moved us back here. Um, and when was that? Uh, we actually wound up going first to Bellevue because my grandparents, my paternal grandparents owned property there. Um, and that was in 1959, early 1959. We moved to Gainesville into the house that they owned for 60 something years um, in December of 1959. Um, and would you say that Gainesville has changed a lot, you know, since you've been here? Oh, tremendously. <laughs> Very. Uh, I will tell you the street that they lived on, which is on the corner of Northeast 23rd Avenue and Northeast 15th Street. 15th Street was a cow path when we moved in. <laughs> now it's a very busy street. <laughs> <laughs> um, and would you say that like Gainesville's like perception of Catholics has changed over that time too? or like your I think so, yes, because I, I will tell you, I attended St. Patrick's grade school um, from the first grade through the eighth. Uh, Walking home in the afternoon, of course, we wore uniforms. And I can tell you, walking home in the afternoon, um, the, the public school kids would throw pebbles at us because we're Catholic. I can tell you there were people in our neighborhood who wouldn't allow us to play with their children because we were Catholic. But I believe they've become more tolerant. <laughs> yeah. um, I think a lot of it had to do because they misunderstood a lot about what Catholicism is. The, um, you said you went to St. Patrick's grade school. Mm -hmm. um, what, what role do you think like St. Patrick's has had in your life, like or in your development of your faith? I guess? Faith. Um, well, of course, I learned all my basics there, the Sisters of St. Joseph. Um, and I've kept with those basics, I think, through my life. I'm in my 60s now, so, you know, it's a pretty long run. Um, I, I think that it it helped to be able to look at things in in a personal way as opposed to the way everybody around you was looking at things. Um, wound up learning how to be tolerant of individuals that didn't share my viewpoints, <laughs> didn't share my beliefs. Um, I think it prepared me tremendous. I can tell you this, when I graduated from the eighth grade at St. Patrick's, I had to go into the public school system because there was no other Catholic school here for that group up high school. Um, for four years, I didn't have to study. I mean, literally, I lost my study habits until <laughs> um, I got into college. And then I had to learn how to study all over again. But I think it we were way ahead of what they were doing in the public schools. Uh, it was a shock to go to the public schools um, because the, even back then in the late 60s, early 70s, um, the respect for teachers in public school just was not there. Um, and you had mentioned that Gainesville had changed tremendously, um, yes. you know, in your experience. 
Would you say that St. Patrick's has, St. Patrick's has also changed uh, like a good amount, I guess? Uh, the church? Yes. The school? Mm-hmm. The church. Um, yeah, when we first started attending St. Patrick's, it was a little old building, probably couldn't hold more than 200 people on Northeast First Street um, with a very small social hall, uh, which you could probably take that whole church and social hall and fit it into the church we have today. <laughs> um, I think so. I think I'm trying to figure out how I want to say this. I believe that the church itself became more open, more to others. Um, it, it's a very welcoming place. I don't know if you could have said that back then, of course, I was only a child back then. Um, but yes, it's grown. It, it's taken on its faith mission, which I'm, you know, I, it was always there, but has stepped up as I've gotten older, or maybe I've just realized it's stepped up since I've gotten older because I've gotten more involved with it. Okay. Um, and um, what was it? Um, yeah, what would you say being a Catholic means to you? I guess that's a big question, but. Being a Catholic. Um, to me, it is the, my belief is it is the one true church God instituted by Christ when he was on, on earth. Um, and it means that we have to follow his teachings. We need to do as he did. Um, we need to be his voice in today's world. We, we do that by showing, you know, our care for humanity, um, our, our desire to do the right thing as opposed to what everybody else is doing. Um, a lot of times it has meant that we're isolated because people don't want to hear anymore that there's a right and a wrong way to do things. Um, and also, uh, you had mentioned that the church, like, you know, had changed and that it's more tolerant of, or it taught you to be more tolerant of like other people and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have any like experiences that you'd like to share, like that maybe influenced that? I guess. Um. Well, I, I would tell you, I went through high school at a very turbulent time here in, in, in Florida. Um, we're constantly being shut down and sent home in high school because of riots in the schools. And, and you had to learn to pretty much turn the other cheek and be tolerant and understand, you know, I like the big thing was when they shut down Lincoln High School and moved everybody over to Gainesville High School because it was the only high school there. I understood, you know, that, and I would have felt the same way if they had shut down Gainesville and sent us to Lincoln, um, particularly if I had been a senior in high school, because you would have lost all of the traditions, et cetera. But it was uh, very, you had to learn to be very tolerant. I mean, I learned, you know, turning the other cheek that they weren't angry with me, that they were angry with the situation. And I just happened to be, it was, it was a very difficult time growing up, <laughs> going through that. Um, I've learned to be able to accept other people's views, even if they are not mine. Uh, if I think they're wrong, I, you know, I will tell you what I think. And if you don't like it, that's, you know, up to you. Um, I'm not so sure I would have learned that if I didn't have my Catholic upbringing. I mean, maybe I would because that's the way my parents were, but. Um, and you're, are you referencing like riots, um, like, for like racial in high oh okay oh maybe i need to explain to you right. we would go to school I, the, the one that sticks out in my mind the most is that we were on split sessions at gainesville high school and i was on the morning session and i remember walking in one morning and we had a common area uh was flanked by the cafeteria on one side a building on the other and then the gym in the back and the gym had two big doors and i remember coming in one morning and there were a sea of people predominantly black in the commons area and and I imagine I remember seeing the doors open to the gym and I saw Coach Acosta and Coach My Black come out. Both very big men, one was black, one was white. And they started throwing pe- students aside. They had been there, they were beaten up on one of the deans because they didn't like something he'd said. Um, so that's what I mean, that sort of thing. It was not unusual for them to put us into lockdown because someone out in the hallways would start something. Um, 
And so. a, like, a, was this around when was this? Like, what time? Um, I graduated in 72, so it was like around 70, 71, 72. Okay. Um, and then, um, are you, or how would you describe like your family? I guess, like, were they close knit or? Um, I come from Irish Italian background, so yes, we were extremely <laughs> close knit. Um, uh, still, you know, in contact with cousins that I may not see them for months, but it's not unusual for us to, on Facebook now, it's, a, it's a wonderful for us because we now stay in touch with each other uh, over the distance because I do have family spread out from New York to Florida, down the coast, and then several people out west. So, um, yeah, very close, very uh, family oriented. You know, we spent holidays together. And uh, could you tell me a little bit about your like professional life, like career and stuff? Okay, um, I graduated from college with a degree in zoology, which I probably never used. <laughs> it's unless you want to go on and get a master's or a PhD, it really doesn't help you that much. But I, I like that aspect of things. Um, I went into the banking field for about seven years into human resources in the banking field. And then I stayed in human resources. Um, and that's where I stayed throughout my, my, my tenure. Um, uh, until I, uh, well, until about 2011, when I went to work for Santa Fe college in the financial aid office. Um, so, uh, I've always kind of been there on the people side of things. <laughs> um, and, um, you mentioned a lot like how your Catholicism has like influenced like I guess your relationships with people. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you said that your parents or your family was always or the, the faith was always like an important part of your life. Is that something that was stressed to you by like your parents or you know something that you learned? Well, during your I will say this I watched my parents do without so that we could have a Catholic education because they thought that was more important than you know, going on trips out by themselves or what have you. So yes, I think it's it, it, it's a very important part, important part of my life that uh, if I didn't have it during times of crisis, I don't know what would have happened. Um, let me see. Um, and what would you say like right now is, you know, like your favorite part of worship at St. Patrick's? or your experience at St. Patrick's? Um, my favorite part of the worship, and we're not doing it right now, is that part where we all peace be with you and, and have that human contact, because right now we can't do it. Um, I, I like, I enjoy being there. It, it, it kind of makes everything right when it's not right. Um, and have you always, like, have you stayed in Gainesville for, like, the majority of your life? Or? Um, I moved out briefly when I went to work in Tampa, but I was coming home every weekend, so I continued to, to attend Mass up here. Oh. It was about a year that I was away. And um, you said you would still attend Mass from Tampa? Is that correct? Yeah, well, I'd come home every weekend and I'd attend Mass. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That family thing. We're very close. I came home almost just about every weekend. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, like in like, you know, the changing world of like faith today or like, mm -hmm. what would you say are some of the challenges that you face as like a Catholic? Well, I, I'm beginning to see, see, at least on a national level, that Catholics are being downgraded again. As a matter of fact, I saw the other day where one political figure indicated that Catholics should not be allowed to hold office because of our beliefs. Um, so I'm starting to see what I saw as a child, I think, again, it's starting to crop up on a national level. And that's, that's very difficult to deal with because I don't think people are as tolerant anymore, let me put it that way, mm -hmm. of anyone that disagrees with them. Um. And um, I think I forgot my question. Um, yeah, how would you say that, like, you know, your faith influences like you politically? If you're, you know, 
I would have to say it does have a, a, an impact on, on my decisions politically because I cannot support a group, an organization that has no respect for life, has no respect for the elderly, has no respect for uh, the disabled or the unborn. So yes, it does have an impact on how I, I view things politically. And this is pretty general, but like, um, I, I forgot my question. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Go ahead. It's okay. Yeah. Um, how do you think, uh, like, I know you've mentioned how like Gainesville, well, Gainesville's like perception of Catholics and stuff like that has changed a lot, but um, how do you think Gainesville like perceives St. Patrick's Church now? Um, I guess it would depend on how, on, on, on who you spoke with. Um, I do know that under Father Roland Julian's care before before he retired, we were well thought of in the community because there was an outreach to every, he, we went to every facet of taking care of the homeless, taking care of those that needed to be taken. So I do think they look upon us favorably, like now we're doing the freedom, the freedom clinics. I don't know if you're familiar with those. So I, I think The majority of Gainesville probably looks upon us favorably, I would say. Um, and, you know, you had mentioned earlier um, some of the, like the, I guess, like the challenges that you faced being a Catholic, like growing up, you know, with like other students from like other schools, like treating you poorly and stuff like that. When did you, when would you say that that started to change, I guess, or was it a gradual process? I think it was gradual. Um... I think when people start realizing who you are as a person and that that you are faith-based and that's okay, I think that's when it started. It was a gradual thing. When, when, when Protestants started realizing that Catholics weren't weird sort of people <laughs> who did weird sort of things. <laughs> It, 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 it's, a, it's a learning process. You know, I, I don't know how many times I'd have to explain things to my non-Catholic friends. What does it mean when this happens? Why do you all say the rosary? You know, that sort of thing. Um, are you, like, were you a, like a single child growing up? Or? Nope, I have three siblings. Three siblings. Um, and you had mentioned that you were still in contact with a lot of your family, like, online and stuff like that. Is that the case with them as well? Yes, yes, it's, yes. Now my one sister and I, neither of us are, are married. So we uh, actually are living together. Okay. Um, um, so yes, but I see and talk with probably, particularly my sisters just about every day. Um, and would you say that like Catholicism has been like uh, an important thing to them as well? Um, yeah, um, my one sister um, attends the Baptist church, but she will tell you she's a Catholic. She does that because that's the only way she can get her husband to attend church. He is not Catholic. Um, so yes. Uh, and um, then I have a, a brother who's an Anglican because that's the closest he can get to Catholicism because he's <laughs> divorced and remarried. <laughs> so. Um, and, uh, like, are you, would you say that you're pretty involved with, like, uh, St. Patrick's? Um, I think so. Um, I attend functions there. I am part of the CCW, which is the Conference of Catholic Women. Um, I, you know, like, I, I've attended their Alpha meetings several times, their Alpha series that they've done. So, yes, I do think I am an active okay. participant. Um, the CCW, um, like what kind of activities like, do you guys do? Conference of Catholic Women. It is, it is our mission to help those that need help. Um, we um, are involved, in, whether it be just our church or the community at large, we are involved in um, home, Hugs for the Homeless, which is a, a Gainesville thing. Uh, we are involved in, uh, what's the place out there, our 39th for the homeless. Um, we get together and do something there um, with them. We um, are involved with Takachali. There's a cottage that we spot and sponsored there. 
Um, and, uh, you know, in the past, like, few decades, you know, there's been a lot of, like, I guess, crises of the church. How would mm -hmm. you say that, um, in your experience, like, the church has responded to them or how it's influenced your feelings? Um, um, I would say in, in some instances, the church didn't respond to what needed to be responded to. Um, I, and I most recently look at all of the the pedophilia that's going on within within the church. I think that had the church brought it out and dealt with it, or not even brought it, had dealt with it in a different manner than just moving priests around, it would have been better for the Catholic Church. Um, I think that because priests are not unmarried, the, the public saw that as the church trying to condone pedophilia as opposed to trying to prevent it from happening further. Um, I will say this, yes, it was, a, it, it, it took me aback, but those are humans and we all have our frailties. We all have those things that we do that are not so nice. <laughs> and to me, the church is not the building. The church is not the people. They are there as an instrument to help you to get to God. Um, and, uh, let me think. I will say this though, the church doesn't know what to do with single people like myself. It, it hasn't figured out what to do with us yet. <laughs> we don't is, fit into a, a good mold for them. Um, that's interesting. Like, how do you mean? Like, could you explain? Well, you know, we have all these family events and we have events for the divorce and, but those of us that chose to remain single and not go into the religious life, they're not quite sure what to do with this, I don't think. <laughs> and then like, I guess, what kind of hopes do you have for like the future of St. Patrick's Church? I hope it continues. Um, I was a lot, a lot of concern there when we went through several different pastors in, in, in a year's time um, that they were gonna shut it down. It is the flagship church here in Gainesville. It has always been a welcoming church for me. Um, and I'd like to just see it continue to grow and, and, and continue to meet the needs of its community, of the community that we are in. Um, and um, you had mentioned earlier um, that your family, like, you know, put a great importance on like a Catholic education mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And they were willing to go without um, would you be able to like maybe like tell us or share some experiences with that or well i can tell you when i started off at st patrick's my brother was too old to go at that point he was out of the out of, out of the eighth grade but when i started off <laughs> i bet they were paying 21 no well actually when the three of us my my sisters and i were all in there they were paying like 27 dollars a month which you know for three wasn't bad by the time i got out they were paying 100 and something just for my sister so <laughs> Um, for my baby sister, um, but I'm sorry, I lost my train, train of thought. Ask the question again. <laughs> oh yeah, um, it just like you, you had mentioned that um, your parents like put a lot of importance on like a Catholic education and that they were mm -hmm. willing um, to you know make sacrifices for that. Um, just like if you had any experiences that you could share. Um, yeah, they. Um, while most of my aunts and uncles were going off on trips by themselves, you know, you know, without the kids, my parents didn't, they, they stayed here with us rather than to ensure, you know, um, if we had to choose between my mother buying a new dress or the Catholic education, the Catholic education, and my parents were in communion on that. It was like, they both felt it was important that we have that education. They felt that we would learn better, that we would be better people for it. Um, and can you tell me a little bit more about your parents? Um, okay. Um, my parents were both born up in Staten Island, New York, grew up during the depression. Um, and met each other, um, I guess. My father's parents owned that four family house that my mother's parents rented a, a portion of from them. I remember asking my father one time, tell me why you married my mother and don't tell me it's because you loved her because that's a cop out. You know, it's an easy thing to say. I want to know why exactly you chose my mother because my mother hung out with some really um, 
attractive women. Uh, or some of her friends are really attractive. And I remember my father saying to me, I married your mother because I knew she had the morals that I wanted my children to grow up with. So that, you know, uh, said, I think said a lot for me, you know, she had the Catholic morals. My mother, till the day she went into to an assisted living, attended mass every morning. I always said that, you know, if the Pope had said <laughs> Catholic women will have a baby every two years, my mother would have done it because <laughs> that's, you know, there was no doubt in her mind when it came to that sort of thing. My father, of course, on the other hand, <laughs> was a little bit different. <laughs> um, while he didn't do a whole lot of mass church going, uh, you know, he, I believe looking at the two of them, he, he was probably more of a religious person than she was. He questioned a lot of things the church did, but his faith was unshakable. Um, it was right or it was wrong. There was no in between. You know, it's no gray areas. Either it was right and it was wrong. If it's wrong, you better fix it. Um, and how would you say, like, that your parents like taught you to like, I guess, treat other people? Like, how was that like influenced by their faith? I guess. Um. Yeah, I, I would say because my father always said, if you treat people like you wanted to be treated, which is pretty much, you know love thy neighbor as thyself, um, then things would be, would always be fine. Would, would, you know, it'd be, you, that's the way it should be. Um, and that's what he did. He, 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 hmm, I don't know how I want to put this. He didn't, I, I, I wouldn't say he ever had an enemy in the world. I mean, uh, you know, he had disagreements with people. Um, and, and, and a lot of times he had disagreements with the church, <laughs> with the people in the church, not with the church. Um, but he always managed to, you know, work through those things. I, I know he, he was for the longest time, he was, he was an auto mechanic here in town and he had his own business and he handled the St. Patrick's vehicles, church vehicles, uh, for the longest time, uh, and he got along. I mean, we, we had priests over at the house all the time back then. Uh, and nuns. The nuns loved him. <laughs> uh, but uh, even with the church, if he thought they were doing something, people at the church, he, he pretty much let them know, you know. I mean, he got into an argument one time with Monsignor Burns. because Monsignor Burns? Or was it McFadden? I can't remember which. One of the two. Because they wanted to put used tires on the nuns' vehicle. And he kept telling them, you can't do that. These are young women going out, you know, all over the place into the into the the rural areas, and 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 uh, and it bothered him because I can't remember which priest he still wanted, which pastor he still wanted the best put on his car. So I mean, you do things right, he always said. And then. Uh... Oh, um, you said that you had started working uh, at Santa Fe College the last mm -hmm. few years. I was there from 2011 until I retired in 2019. <laughs> okay. Um, and then uh, did, did you say that you went to UF? You said you got your yes, degree. Yes, graduated from the University of Florida. Okay. Uh, how would you describe your college experience, uh, you know, being in the same city, I guess? That... Um, well, I stayed at home. Mm -hmm. and was, and, you know, I had to pay my own way through college, so they offered to let me stay at home. I didn't have to pay for it, so I did. Um, it was a unique experience. Um, because I guess that's when, I would say a bit of a sheltered life until I got into public school and then particularly in college because things really were a whole lot different once you got into college. Um, and I was growing up at a time when, you know, free love was free love. <laughs> um, people didn't think about consequences and it was very difficult um, um, having to deal with that. Yeah. Knowing um, that I wasn't. Yeah. Um, would you, Maybe you want to share some experiences about that if you're okay with that? 
um, like your time in college and how, you know, your faith like conflicted with like some of the things that you were seeing, I guess? Um, yeah, um, a lot of my friends once we got into college started, stopped going to church all of us, you know, it was like, and I never did. I, and it was very difficult because these were people I had grown up with through grade school. And, and for whatever reason, we're moving away from the church. And I think a lot of it had to do because of the, I don't want to sound bad about this, but the liberal values that our professors were instilling up, upon us. And yeah, I, you know, I took a lot of flack for continuing to go to church and continue to stand my ground. Um, and would you say like that kind of dynamic between like having to like, uh, you know, stick true to your faith, despite like a bunch of other people, like, you know, departing from it or, you know, challenging it in some way, would you say that that's been like something that you've experienced like throughout your life or was it like kind of concentrated in your college experience? College and somewhat in high school. Okay. Not as bad in high school, but college, it really, I guess, you had a, a, a bigger volume of people that are coming in and out of your life at that point, I think, and, and pushing and pressuring and, you know, everybody's doing it. Why aren't you sort of thing? Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it, it was difficult because a lot of people I thought were my friends kind of moved away, <laughs> separated themselves. Um, and what would you say has like, I guess, like kept you, you know, like has maintained your faith all these years and like has like um, kept you or maintained your like commitment to, you know, St. Patrick's? Okay. I believe there is a heaven and I believe that we make the decisions as to whether or not we want to go there. And we make those decisions. And I personally... And my view of heaven, let me just kind of give you my view of heaven because that might explain. To me, heaven is a place where if you're done well in your life and you've lived the life that you should, you'll see God. To me, hell is going up to heaven and being left outside the gates. Everybody's in there partying and having a good time and see, get to see God. And ultimately, I want that. I do not want to spend an eternity in hell. And I do believe it exists, so. Um, and you would say like, you know, that mindset has like, kind of kept you, you know, close to your faith. Is that what, is that? I um, think so. And the, 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 the ability to be able to be reunited with everyone I've loved, everyone I've known. Um, and you had uh, like mentioned, a time in the church when like you had gone through like a few pastors and it was mm -hmm. you weren't sure like how the future was going to be um mm -hmm. would you mind like you know expanding upon that and that wasn't that long ago okay. <laughs> uh, uh, father lawrence has been here two years now so two or three years i think um so before that we had uh well father julian hit his 75th birthday and the bishop accepted his retirement so it was like he was gone we had a father buoy that was working with us who's now at pastor uh, Our Lady of Consolation in, I think, Calhoun. Um, and he, they were both very, very, um, I, would, I would call them true shepherds of their flocks. Their flock came first, their people, the needs of, their, of, the, of the church, the people attending the church came. And uh, Father Bowie was not asked to be, so they sent us a new priest I believe his name was Father Iacocca, Iacocca, I'm not sure, was with us for maybe four months. And he was gone. So they sent us another priest. And he decided that this wasn't what he wanted. He didn't want parish life. He wanted it to be involved in, in the religious education of, of, of men coming into the priesthood. So he left and he was there only a couple of months. And so it was like, oh, now why? Um, so for a while, Father Phillips, who is now deceased, who was the deanery in charge of like the deanery priest, um, kind of watched over us and Father Bowie kind of took on the day to day. And people love 
both Father Julian and Father Billy and uh, the bishop chose not just to leave him here. So it was really a lot of turmoil going on um, when poor Father Lawrence came in. And you know how it goes. Half the people hate you, half the people love you when you come in and half the parish hated him. Um, he was different, but I will tell you this, he too is concerned about his flock, his people, the, the souls of his people are more important to him than the church looking, you know, like ornate or what have you. Um, he's got some very, very, I think, wonderful homilies that uh, I am so glad I was able to hear them. So it's still a little rocky, you know, but people are starting to realize he has our best interests at heart. <laughs> And then, you know, like in this interview, we've talked a lot about like how, um, you know, treating other people well and like, um, you know, no, understanding people is like an important part or important to you. Um, would you say like that that's something that's part of being a Catholic or would you say that that's just something that you've come to understand? That should be something that's part of being a human being. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you don't see it. And I think it's because, and not just Catholicism, I think it's because we are allowing our Christian beliefs to be rolled over, to be, to be uh, pushed aside. Though I think having grown up Catholic has, has helped to define that for me. Um, and then I think, yeah, I think that's all my questions. Um, do you have any like things that you would like to share before? Um, I, I, just that St. Patrick's is, is, has been, well, not even just St. Patrick's, the Catholic faith for me, whenever I've been in crisis, whenever I have had to think about or make a decision, I've been able to turn to my religion, to my faith and do that. And I think, some of that is because I was fortunate enough to have had the background in the Catholic faith that I had. I, uh, to have had the religious that have come into my life and, and, and cared about how things are perceived and how we learn and what was important. Um, so it's been faith first, I think, with them. Um, you said like uh, you just said that, like that people had like come into your life and like helped you you know like guided you in a way with, mm -hmm. or are you referring to like um, people within the church or like family well well no there have been times like even oh, let's see how I'm gonna put this when I've been in crisis when I when I have thought you know, do I want to continue being a Catholic? Is there something out there that is better? And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I looked at other churches and found nothing that made me feel the way I did at the, in the Catholic church. But like, I could talk to priests. I could talk to other people in my, 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 my church. I talked with nuns that I had uh, as, a, a, you know, growing up. Um, I maintained that ability to stay in, and, and to be able to just talk it through with people like that, that understood the processes and, and understood where I was coming from. Um, I've always turned, and, and to God, I've always turned to God when, when you know, I, I don't, may not understand God why this is happening, but I understand it has. And many times in my life, I would ask for something from God and I not get it. Six months to a year down the road, it's like, okay, this is why I didn't get it. <laughs> this is why you held off. This is why you wouldn't let me have this because this was down the road. So I know he has a plan for me. And I don't think he's done with me yet. <laughs> um, but I don't think I could have talked with non-people that didn't believe. So like in and that gotten sense. That, oh, excuse me? No, sorry. And gotten, gotten, gotten to where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. So I guess like in that sense, would you say that like 
St. Patrick's or just like the Catholic community as a whole is like, you know, help like it's been like a very positive like thing to like your growth as like a person and like as you know. Yes, um, St. Patrick's more so because I can tell you I've been to other Catholic churches in Gainesville and I have not have not felt welcomed. So um, you would say like the sense of community at St. Patrick's is important, I guess. Yes. Um, and then like, how, like, how do you think like St. Patrick's like maintains that like sense of community? Is it something that like maybe you could comment to, I guess? It, it, it's it gotta be the people. It's gotta be the people that are there because if they are not willing to maintain, if I am not willing to do my part, then it, it wouldn't matter how hard the pastor tried, he would get nowhere. So I think it's it's the people there, and they they they're very welcoming. Um, you know, you walk in Sunday morning, and it's like whether or not you know somebody, you're hi, how are you this morning? You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, you know, for all your answers. Um, like. Is there anything else that you would like to share before like, we conclude the interview, I guess? No, I guess I'm good. Um, you know, and you know, thank you very much for your participation with this. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and I think that concludes the interview. Yep. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Yep, thank you.